We're somewhere a little different today. I'm out in the garage because I've got the X-Tool D1 10 watt laser. We're gonna build it up, have a play and see what it can do. So right now you might be asking, hey John, don't you have a Snapmaker 2? Why didn't you just get the 10 watt laser module for that? Well, I was thinking about it, but before I actually did it, Makeblock contacted me and said, hey, would you like to play with the X-Tool D1? It's a 10 watt laser. It has a much bigger cutting area than the Snapmaker 2. And I just thought, yeah, why not? Let's see what it can do. So let's go through the box and see what's in there. So I haven't filmed out here in the garage before. So this is, this is a new experience, but we have a little screw on feet. We'll take all of these out because we don't need them just yet, but we will need them. And we'll pull these bits of foam out. Oh, one big bit and we'll grab this envelope then. And under here, oh, we have the first of the rails. All right, I'm gonna need both hands. I'm gonna put you on the other camera. <laughs> All right, so, ah, we have a roller down here. And uh, that's one tray of stuff. And then we have another tray of stuff. That's me dropped something. Alrighty, so here we have our trays and we have our roller here for doing cylindrical objects. We'll worry about that in a bit. For now, I want to get all of this stuff out of here. I think we're going to have to actually read the book for this one. Alrighty, so I think I've got everything laid out. That's the back. That's the back. That's the front, there's the two sides, that's the X gantry. That's the huge freaking laser. There's the feet that we don't need to worry about just yet. I'm actually gonna screw all these together so I don't lose them because they've all got a thread in the top and a thread in the bottom. So we've got all our screws and bits in here. We don't need that yet, or that, or this, or these. So, that goes in there. That goes in there. And I don't think that this worktop is gonna be quite big enough or deep enough. It'll be big enough to build it. We'll set it up somewhere else when it comes time to actually using it, I think. Because this needs to go on here. So we got, oh, a little piece of plywood. We got a bunch of little M4 screws and a coupler. And we got cable ties, oh, piece of leather, a four gig SD card, oh, a metal business card, uh, more screws, and a steel dog tag. So these are obviously our little pack of basic test materials, but we've got more than this to play around with. But right, we need to find M4 by eight millimeter screws. All right, done that, done that. Now it says put the memory card in and fire it up. So it's built, but it obviously doesn't <laughs> fit on the bench. So I am gonna move over there. I'm gonna find some power for it. I'm gonna grab the laptop and then we'll see if we can start cutting something. Ah. <laughs> Alrighty, so it's built, um, but the floor's the only surface I've got big enough right now to put it down and actually use it. So I brought my laptop down and uh, we're going to install the software and see if we can get this thing up and running. Wow. 
Alrighty then, so the software is all set up on the laptop. It engraves, it cuts, um, at least in the little thin plywood that I've got to test. But now it's late, so I'm gonna go to bed and tomorrow we'll tackle a real project. So you might have figured out from that last clip that this isn't a full size working camera. Believe me, I tried. I looked online. I really wanted to laser cut a proper working camera that I could stick a roll of film in and go out and shoot. But shockingly, there, there are no plans for any that I could find online. Maybe one day I'll have a go at making one myself. But for now, <laughs> we've got these. I have another one right here that we're going to have a go at building up, which is why I've got the gloves and the paper down because we're going to be messing around with super glue. And I know if I don't wear the gloves, I'm going to get it all over my fingers. So these were cut using the Xtool D1. And you might be noticing as I'm flipping some of these over that while the fronts don't look too bad, there is a little bit of discoloration around the edges of some of the cuts. This is mostly down to the fact that I don't have an air assist for the X-Tool D1. An air assist would take care of all of these. The bigger problem though is on the back because I have to cut on a sheet of wood because X-Tool does make a metal honeycomb grid um, which is designed for putting things on in order to laser them so that you get airflow underneath. That isn't available in the UK and they didn't send me one. So I've had to do these on wood. So there's a little bit of discoloration underneath around all the cut lines and it, it it's the same on pretty much all of them. Except for this one, which I painted black on the inside. And this is what I was going to talk to you about. Normally in this lens assembly, there's a piece of black acrylic that you cut out to fit in one of these. So you get a nice shiny front. Um, I don't have any black acrylic handy, but the first one I put together, you can see why it has that black acrylic in there. Um, because otherwise it's just really, really bright. So on this one, I spray painted the inside black. And that's what I've done with this one as well. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to put this together. And we're going to start with the two side pieces, which go like this. And these give, these give you something to hang it from. I mean, I, I personally wouldn't hang it from a necklace, but uh, you could. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we're going to glue these in. And I've got here, I have a couple of clips. The glue on this little birch plywood is pretty much instant, but uh, we're going to use the clips just to help hold things in a little bit tighter. And we're going to get this one, the first end piece, and we'll put dab on on that side, dab on on that side, and then pass this through that way. And then we'll do the same on the other one. So I printed, or I printed, I cut these out using the Laserbox basic software, which comes free with the machine. It's not an amazing piece of software. I, I will rant a little bit about it later on, but it does the job. It, it will let you load things in. It will let you cut them out. Um, has that dried already? Yes, because these now need to go onto the front on here. So we're gonna put glue down here. So this was all, everything you're going to see today was done using Laserbox because I wanted to see what the the software that comes supplied with the laser engraver can do. There are plenty of other options out there for laser engravers. One specifically that you can use with Laserbox, which is you know a very popular piece of software, is Lightburn. I don't have Lightburn. I will be getting it for sure. But for this, I just wanted to see what Laserbox Basic can do. Like I said, you know it will do it. Everything you're going to see today was done with Laserbox Basic. So it's possible, but it's, 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 it's kind of frustrating in the way that it works because it's not very advanced. Right, so that's that one glued in. And then we're gonna put the top piece on, which hopefully, yes, I haven't killed it, but it's that way around. So I'm gonna put a little dab in there and we're gonna put the piece along the bottom. And now we've got the front on, the top, the sides and the bottom. And then we're going to 
pop a load on the back. Well, not a load, enough, a few spots. You really don't need a lot of super glue with this basswood, which is nice, even with the, the burnt edges. I mean, like, the laser works by vaporizing the wood, basically, to, to burn through it and cut it. But there's no, like, carbon dust or stuff going to rub off on your fingers. It comes off pretty clean. I mean, you can see that the wood is slightly singed, but yeah, there's no there's no carbon or bits coming off on it. So we'll give them a second to dry, offset, um, and we'll talk about the rings because you see this one is just very slightly thinner than this one, and that's because this one normally goes on the body, and then your little black acrylic thing goes on there, and then this sort of traps it in place. But as we don't have that, it doesn't matter. And these are really awkward to put together because with the birch, ah, with the super glue, you don't get a lot of time to work it. Basically, wherever you put it, it's stuck. So we have to be very careful putting these together now to make sure they all line up properly. Another little dab on there and there and there and there. And there's the next lot. Then we're going to put the last few dobs on there. There we go. And that's it. There's our lens. <laughs> but right, you can see with the inside of this painted, we don't really need that black acrylic. So there are little dobs on that. That's it. That's already dried. Fake hot shoe, fake shutter button, like a shutter speed, mode dial, film rewind, something. And that's it. There is our little camera done and then you can see we got three of them but as well as these we'll get these all out of the way as well you know you can make more practical things with the laser engraver too like these boxes and these ones actually stack so they're really handy just for storing things in like whatever you want really screws nuts cameras now i also made this which you've no idea what it is but it's actually a fixture for bottle openers you can see if i hold this on here this bit there is a little bit higher up than this it's actually two and a half millimeters higher up than this which it happens to be the exact thickness of one sheet of this which is that little bit in there the top bit is a cutout for the whole thing so that basically when i want to engrave one of these i can slot a blank one in there I can align my laser up with this top left corner and then when I've got my graphic laid out in Photoshop I can offset it 45 mils that way, 6 millimeters that way and then I know my picture is going to be engraved on it in the same place every single time because just trying to line one of these up like loose and then move the laser and maneuver it, to, to, it it's not easy but when you've got it on this and you can get the crosshair right over the corner it's, it makes it dead that easy. But as you can see, it engraves on anodized aluminium just fine. Now, I also had a go at some coasters. And this one is a very slightly passive-aggressive one for when those friends and relatives come over that, that, that sort of don't get the hint. Um, you can just leave this next to their chair and then maybe they'll figure it out. But this one is just a standard vector graphic with solid text. There's there's nothing fancy about this one at all. I think I went 50% power and yeah, 50% power and 50 millimeters a second. And uh, that was it. First try. No problem. Worked great. Then I decided I'm going to get a little bit fancy and I'm going to do a picture on a coaster which is what you're seeing on screen right now. And then I ended up with this one, which is my little profile picture down there and a little bit of subliminal messaging. And I thought, yes, that turns out really well. You can see with these coasters, as they get turned more towards a video light, you know, the, the reflection on the top does sort of obscure the engraving a little bit, but uh, like to my eye, they look fine because they're at an angle like this. So you see them looking really quite dark. Um, after I did this one, though, I decided to try one of my other photos. This was a picture I shot God, about 10 and a half years ago. Um, this is my friend Colette. And uh, <laughs> I had a scream at the camera in the middle of a photo shoot. And doesn't it look amazing? Um, I had to put this one on a coaster and just see how it looked. And yeah, I'm I'm really really impressed with how well this thing engraves on coasters and you know these are i got a whole stack of these now that i've uh, i've had a couple of orders for coasters people want me to make and there's a few more that i want to experiment with and different designs i want to do but yeah so that's coasters 
Another thing I tried to engrave, which you can see here, is glass. Now, you're not supposed to normally be able to do glass on a diode laser because the, you know, diode... Diode lasers around the 400-ish nanometers range are visible light, so they just pass straight through glass, and assuming it's still in focus, it'll just burn whatever's on the other side of it. So it, it won't technically engrave glass. However, if you coat the glass in something and then engrave that, it will burn the glass and etch it. This white bar at the top is where I screwed up and I forgot to invert the image, and then when I did it again with the image inverted properly, it it came out beautifully. If I put something light behind this, you can see that we are still seeing white through the glass. If I, you know, you can still see my finger going in and out in that clear bit. On white, it, it kind of looks like a negative, um, but then as soon as you put something black behind it, the, uh, the picture comes through just fine. So if you've got a dark drink in here like Coke or Dr. Pepper or something, then fantastic, your picture will look the way it looks. The noise you heard is, yes, that was the glass. When I went to wash the paint off this, well, the paint came off fine. Normally people use tempura paint, which is like a kid's paint that they use in schools because it's water soluble after it's dried. So, you know, kids are messy. Um, it makes it easy to wash out of clothes. Um, I couldn't find my airbrush, so I couldn't use the tempura paint. So I just used regular standard black spray paint. To get that off, I used isopropyl alcohol. And then to get rid of the stench of the isopropyl alcohol, which did a beautiful job of getting rid of the paint, I went to go and wash it in hot soapy water. I put this in the sink, I put the hot water in, and as soon as the bottom of this thing touched the hot water, it just cracked all the way around and fell off. So a word of warning when you're going to look for glass mugs for laser engraving, um, or, or just general use really, make sure they can handle the heat or you, you're not going to be able to wash them. <laughs> But that's pretty much it for the Xtool D1 for now. Uh, I am planning to do some more videos on the Xtool D1 because like I said, I've, I've had people asking me about the coasters. I've had a few people asking me about the fixture and the bottle openers. Um, and I really want to experiment more with glass. I want to get a few more items. I want to play around with some coated stainless steel as well, because it's supposed to be able to engrave that the same way it's done with the anodized aluminium. As far as the machine itself, like the setup of it was pretty easy. I had it done in probably half an hour, setting up the software as well. The laser box basic that comes with it is, as the name suggests, extremely basic. It's frustrating at times, especially if you've got some complex designs with lots of layers and things on top of each other. It makes it difficult to select different objects to change the settings of those different objects. So at some point I will probably be switching over to Lightburn, but for this review, I, I just wanted to, I, I wanted to see what it came with without having to spend any more money. And Laserbox Basic did all this, it does work. Um, it, it's just a little bit frustrating because it's not very good. Overall, you know, I mean, I'd rather have this than the 10 watt laser module for the Snapmaker 2. Mostly, well, two reasons. One, the larger build volume. The working area is 432 by 406 millimeters or 17 by 16 inches, which is a bit bigger than the 12 by 14-ish inches build plate of the Snapmaker 2. The other is the noise. The Snapmaker 2 is really, really loud. Um, I mean, to, to be fair, most of these engravings didn't take very, very long. Um, like even the coasters, even even the photos on the coasters only took a little under half an hour. But yeah, I, I it's a lot quieter than the Snapmaker 2. So so those are the, the sort of two big reasons why I think I probably won't be ordering the laser module for the Snapmaker 2. And I'll be sticking with this instead. But I will have more videos coming out about the Xtool D1. If there's anything you're curious about, ask me questions down in the comments below. If you've got an Xtool D1, what do you think of it? I think it's pretty cool. If you have any questions about how to do certain things on your Xtool D1, drop those down below as well. And if I can help, I will. If I can have a go and figure it out, I will do that and pop up another video about that topic. But I will definitely be coming back to the coasters. I'll be coming back to the aluminium. And I really want to have a go at stainless steel. But for now, I think that's it. If you like this video, thumbs up, all the rest of it, smash the buttons. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.